Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. It's Sunday afternoon, December 10th, 2017. I want to talk on a good topic that I've been talking about with a few other people. Some people don't really get it, but I'm hoping that the body of Christ on here gets it. I'm going to post the scriptures with it. Um, this is what I'm preaching on tomorrow in the jails. Um, Heavenly Father, I come to you and present myself as a living vessel to be used by you for your purpose and your purpose only. May you take this spiritual insight that you have given me, Lord, and place it in my brothers and sisters who will be listening to this sermon, who will take the time out to actually study the sermon and the scriptures that go with it so they can get their own personal revelation of this sermon in their hearts. Heavenly Father, it is not I who teach this word or preach this word, but it is the Holy Spirit that is in me who I give full authority, full control of my mind, my heart, my lips, my words, and my eyes to perceive and to understand what is going to come out of my mouth, not just for the body of Christ, but also for myself. And I give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So I've been talking with people about um, Christ putting us on and how we're to put him on. What I want the body of Christ to understand is Jesus was sinless, but he put on sin. He put on flesh. He put on mortality from immortality. God himself put us on through his son, Jesus, to die in our place. So we're going to walk through this, and I just want you to really take time to listen and to study and to get the revelation of what a loving guide we serve. Christ has put us on in exchange for us to put him on. First point. Let's look at the big picture. God became man to die for the very creation that he created. John chapter 1, verse 1 through 2 and verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now, most of us all understand and know that the word is Jesus Christ. So God is saying in the beginning, him and his son were. They've always been, they will always be. And as I shared with you when I was talking about um, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the other sermon, how Jesus is in heaven, he was on earth, and he's going back to heaven, that whole deity just blows our mind how Christ does all these things. But here's the kicker. God becoming Jesus, becoming us. And the word, Jesus Christ, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld God's glory, the glory of the only begotten of the, only begotten of the Father, full of grace. So God's grace came in the form of Jesus. Grace and mercy the what the bible says in matthew 6 seek first the kingdom of god and all his righteousness his righteousness was given to us through jesus christ point two second god god in jesus god in jesus took on sinful flesh and became sinful sinful flesh in order to be able to die for sinful flesh because a price had to be paid for the disobedience that Adam did. I want you to listen to this because I just was led by the Spirit this morning in my own personal time reading Ephesians and was kind of focusing on something about the blessings we have in heavenly places. And the next thing I know, oh, my spirit was like, you need to preach on what you've been talking about for the last few weeks. That's what I felt in my spirit. So check it out. Second, God in Jesus 
took on sinful flesh one time and became sinful flesh two times in order to be able to die for sinful flesh three times. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And pay the price that had to be paid for the disobedience that Adam did. Romans 8, 3. For what the law could not do, the Ten Commandments, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemning sin in the flesh. Listen, sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, not that Christ was a sinner or that there was sin in Christ, but Christ put on sinful nature. And the reason he put on sinful nature is because there was a price that had to be paid for our disobedience through Adam. And God knew the only one that could pay that price, the only one that could endure all that was Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin. Listen. For he, God, hath made Jesus to be sin for us who knew not sin, that we might be that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now we have to understand we have to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior in order to put that righteousness on. Verse uh, point number three. We are we are instruments commanded to put on Christ. This has many meanings, but let's, let's remember that to put something on means that it is covering us and it is, and it is presenting us who we are. So if I put Christ on, he's covering me. So when God sees me, he sees his son. What am I representing? Jesus Christ. If I am walking in the spirit, remember, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. All right, here we go. Galatians chapter 3, 20, verse 27. For as, a ma for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. When you got right with God, when you, you got baptized in front of heaven, hell, and earth, and all the people, you presented yourself as a, as a baptismal, that you died when you went in that water and you came out. We came out, um, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we are new, 5, 17. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. For old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Romans 3, 14. But put you on, put you on, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. When I put on Christ, my mind and everything is supposed to line up with the word of God and I'm supposed to be changing the way that I see things. Oh, don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do that. Philippians 2.5 let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. How do I get the mind of Christ in me? Glad you asked. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If my mind is thinking like Jesus, if I'm putting on Jesus, I'm putting on heaven that came to earth to be me to die for me that I may be able to think like Jesus, talk like Jesus, walk like Jesus, because Jesus is my great example. In Joshua 1.8, it says to meditate day and night on this word that you may have great success. Be ye encouraged. You want to think like Christ, you want to walk like Christ, you want to be in the Spirit, you want to walk in the Spirit, you want to fulfill the, the fruits of the Spirit, then you need to be in your Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, 
and the word was with God and the word was God and that word became flesh and Jesus took himself as the living Bible and put himself wrapped up in that word and then said read this word and this word's going to change the way you think the way it changed the way you act if you are submissive to it if you are filled with the spirit if you have given your life to Christ if your heart has been changed if your thoughts are to please God this whole thing has to do with the way that you present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, not to man, not to the church, not to your woman, not to your husband, not to your children, but to Jesus Christ, first and foremost. All right. Um, the fourth thing to look at. This is the most hardest part, but the most revealing part of you being a Christian. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21 and 23. For, for even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again when he suffered he threatened not but committed himself to him that judges righteously what he's saying here is even though jesus suffered he knew that he had to suffer but he was leaving us an example that when people are coming against us we should have come against them christ held his peace even on the cross even while being crucified whipped stripped of his flesh he didn't go after nobody. And even on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. So let's go on to this Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 through 48. You're going to get a really good glimpse of how a Christian is supposed to be towards a Christian as well as an unbeliever. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love them, which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans do the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans do so? But you therefore perfect even as your father, be ye perfect even as your father in heaven is perfect. Now, my whole purpose of this is I was trying to express to some brothers that Christ put us on. And I said, you know, Christ was born all God and all man, but he still put us on. If you read in um, Hebrews um, 4, chapter 4, verse 15, and Luke chapter 4, verse 3 through 12, you will see how he had so much in tune with us. He had to literally walk in our body. Please, please, Father, let them see this. Jesus had to walk in our body, take on the same temptations that we took on in order to fulfill the whole commandment and then say, I did, Jesus did, what man could not do. Romans 8, 3 through 6. He took on man, fulfilled not biting into the temptation, not giving into the temptation, that he could be that perfect sacrifice to die for God's perfect man. Adam was perfect before he sinned, and he was given a command not to error. He erred in his disobedience, which made everyone after him die. But God foresaw all that before the foundations of the earth. In many verses and books of the Bible, 
It's a continuance of before the foundations of the earth, Jesus before the foundations of the earth, us before the foundations of the earth, all of them before the foundations of the earth. All this was a thought. Even God's like, okay, I know this is going to happen, and I am going to have to die for my sacrifice, for my children, but I'm going to teach them unconditional love through my son who was made in the likeness of sinful flesh with the characteristics that I placed in man at the beginning to become the complete living sacrifice for that being to get them back to me and leave his spirit to edify, encourage, and navigate them back to me. Man, that's, that's deep. Last but not least, Jesus, God in the flesh, put on mortality and suffered the price of living in sinful flesh and succumbing to its desires. Hebrew 4, 15, Luke 4, 3 through 12. In order to die in our place. Now you claiming, those of you, I'm a Christian and you still live in sinful nature, and now you claiming to be a Christian should do the same for him. Lord, I pray my words did not bring no condemnation, but conviction to those who may not be walking in the spirit, but walking in the flesh. Lord, as your righteousness has set me free, as your salvation and your blood and your crucifixion on the cross took my place, May you instill this thought, these words into my brothers and sisters. Lord, I did not bring this to them to condemn nobody, but to have people realize what you did that we may be with you once again. So Heavenly Father, I pray that your word would edify, encourage, uplift, teach, and full understanding of what you did. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all.